Welcome to episode seven of Wine Terroir. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite up and coming producers in Burgundy, Chanta Reeves. They are a micro negotiant and they are kicking ass. Okay, so we're talking about Burgundy, and today we're actually tasting two wines uh, from a micro negociant uh, named Chanta Reeves. And m- let's start off with micro negociant. So, micro obviously meaning small, but a negociant is essentially uh, a wine merchant which has its roots in Burgundy, uh, which historically have basically uh, bought grapes or must uh, or actual wines. Uh, from different areas that are already, um, or, or even juice, and have either blended them together or um, bottled them individually on their own under their own label and sold them as theirs. Um, this is quite common since a, you have a lot of growers in, a, in, in certain regions, but not necessarily a lot of merchants. Um, and so this is something that has uh, a, a lot of roots, and sometimes these uh, negotiants can actually own their own vines. And you see this in Champagne and uh, to some extent Bordeaux, and but really see it a lot in Burgundy. And these guys are um, a very small um, uh, winemaking uh, husband and wife combination. Uh, Tomoko Kuriyama, who uh, studied, is Japanese, but studied at uh, Geisenheim in Germany, uh, Wine Institute, and also uh, her husband Guillaume Bott, uh, who's also uh, worked uh, at a lot of uh, major uh, places in Burgundy. And so this is their sort of side project. Um, so it's small. Um, they don't make a lot of wine, um, and they don't own these vines. They basically source grapes from uh, places in Volnay and uh, um, uh, all across Burgundy, uh, Pomard, I think they have as well. Uh, I forget what their whites are. If they were, a, I believe, I think there was a there's a Pelini that they a Pelini Marche that they make as well. Um, and so they they can bottle. They'll bottle them. Uh, they will. Um, They'll they'll make the wine. They will uh, uh, st- store it and raise it uh, or have it in oak, uh, and then they will uh, figure out exactly how it's made. Uh, this is their entry level. Uh, both these wines retail for about thirty dollars. This is a two thousand fifteen vintage, which is a uh, quite prolific vintage. Uh, not as kind of airy and light uh, and elegant as the two thousand fourteens in general, um, but the two thousand fifteen is a is a is a great buy. In general, I like an entry-level wine because it, it represents um, usually the winemaker's style um, at the at the most basic form. Uh, they will procure or, or blend together grapes that they deem uh, representative of their style. And as you start to go up the food chain of their offering into uh, either designated vineyards or Premier Cru or Grand Cru sites in Burgundy, um, usually you start to marry that terroir that was from that specific site um, with their style. And so that's why you can ha- you can basically see like um, a thread that's carried through all their wines. So first off, uh, we have Maison Chante uh 2015. Uh, Bourgogne Blanc Chardonnay. Maybe a touch too cold, we'll see. Okay. So on the color, um, I'm getting a, a, a pale lemon, a medium, medium lemon color, uh, medium minus. Okay, uh, this is, I would say, medium intensity on the nose. Um, it's not jumping out of the glass. I think part of that is it's still a touch too cold. Um, it'll warm up, and I'll come back to it and see if it, if it evolves a little bit more. Um, so things I'm getting, um, br- uh, bright, like Meyer sweet, ripe lemon, yellow apple, Kind of uh, a little bit, uh, almost like Asian pear. I want to say like um, a touch of cantaloupe, like pretty mild. Like not uh, like like um, what's that? Melon and prosciutto. Like the uh, not super sweet, but like you know, there's a little bit of a touch of sweetness, but it's more of like a, a not quite honeydew. 
almost a touch of a creaminess. I believe these are both whole cluster, for, um, whole cluster frosting. I know the red is, I'm not sure about the white. Um, didn't see specific notes on that. Yeah, definitely getting um, like kind of like a um, like a lemon custard now, uh, yogurty note. And almost uh, like a little saltiness. Okay, should be good for now. A lot more, um, yeah, medium, medium plus on the palate for intensity. Again, still touch cold. This wine is dry. Um, medium acidity. Medium acid. Let's go medium acidity. Um, medium alcohol. This alcohol is not bothering me. It's like 12 and a half, 13 maybe. Has to be on here somewhere. 12 and a half. Uh, yeah, alcohol is really balanced. I mean, it was I had just going through my list of like things to talk about. I was like, where's the alcohol at? And had to think about it because it wasn't necessarily showing. In terms of body, um, yeah, a, a little weightier than some of the 2014s that I've had uh, from them. Um, same medium body, not not super uh, light. Uh, flavor profile, uh, definitely one of the things I noticed on, right on the palate is I, I was getting a little floral, like kind of like chamomile tea, uh, kind of white flower kind of note. Uh, still getting a lot of citrus, uh, lemon, uh, lemon custard, like lemon meringue, uh, yogurt. Uh, What's the uh, Buddha's hand? That kind of citron. Um, what's the other term for that? The the citru the really like pungent citrusy thing. The Buddha's hand, I think, is what it's called. Um, yeah, a little yellow apple. Um, not as much the melon on the palate. Uh, still some Asian pear. Yeah. Uh, touch that kind of salty, um, salty on the palate, like sea salt, um, briny almost. They're just really subtle. Um, uh, really balanced. So, I mean, I just keep thinking like this is. I don't really get a ton of oak. I'm sure there's some used oak on this. Um, uh, the finish is. Uh, I'm getting almost like a, a waxy thing on the finish as well. Um, medium length, not super long finish, but. Uh, Really tasty and and, and like there's an energy to uh, like a like a um, a vi like a an energy or vibe on the wine that uh, is quite nice. I think this will go great with a lot of different types of food. Uh, you know, it's not super complex. It's not like over the top, like wowing me, knocking me out of the uh, ballpark. But I think for the thirty dollar price point, um, again, I'm not I usually don't factor in the price point, um, but. As a bottle, um, you know, I'd say this is 87, 87 point wine. Um, I think this is a, a, a pretty good value for the money. And, and on a, if you taste a bottle of this and you like it, or either one of these bottles, uh, going up the food chain with them is, is highly recommended. I've, I've enjoyed um, a number of other bottles from them, uh, from their, uh, from their uh, designate sites, um, or the designate sites that they buy from. Yeah, that's a well-made wine. Now, we're on to the 2015 uh, Chanteries Bourbon Rouge Pinot Noir. Uh, and one thing I will note, um, if you look on the back label of these wines, um, you'll see uh, Becky Wasserman and Company. Uh, and so Becky Wasserman is... Um, a famous American that moved to Burgundy in the late 60s and essentially uh, 
not with the intent, I believe, to start a, start a wine company, um, but has been essentially an ambassador almost for Burgundy. And um, and not only just the high-end wines, um, but the, basically an ambassador for um, Burgundy at all price points. Uh, they bring in stuff from things like this to, you know, really high-end. And, and, and she also helps discover. Um, so she's a broker. She uh, will help discover wines and then work with importers to bring them into market. Um, but she gets a lot of back label credit. So a lot of times if you're looking at things in, from Burgundy, you see the Becky Meat Wasserman, it's usually something of interest and it's either either a well-established name that she found way back when, or it's something um, that is new and upcoming that she believes is something of interest. Um, and, and I believe her son is, uh, is in the business with her. Um, so jumping into this, yeah, this is a medium minus, almost pale. Definitely pale on the rim, uh, fading to almost like a garnet. So like a uh, medium minus ruby, fading into a, a kind of a pale garnet rim. Um, typical Pinot Noir. Um, I mean, I could read my newspaper through this or my iPad through this. That's probably a better term. Oh, there we go. So I think I had the, the first vintage I had of them was the 2012 or 2013. Um, and was hooked on it right from there. Uh, I picked these wines up at uh, Flatiron Wines, uh, who used to either direct import these, uh, but one of the few places that would carry them. And uh, congratulations to Flatiron because um, they do a great job of finding new and upcoming things uh, and get and really let their 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 uh, customers know about them. Um, so props to Flatiron. Um, they get a lot of kudos here for for seeking out new and interesting things. Yeah, um, medium plus intensity on the nose. This is jumping out of the glass. Um, so I'm getting red currant, red cherry, um, not stewed down, just like ripe, um, tasty fruit. I'm getting almost a touch of like a, um, uh, what am I thinking? Uh, like menthol -y, minty n n note as well. Something herbal, I don't know. Um, uh, sarsaparilla kind of thing. Um, like Chinese medicine, almost herbal. If anybody is familiar with uh, this Chinese medicine aromas. Yeah, uh, almost a dark cherry as well. A lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of red currant. Uh, uh, even strawberry and cherries, red cherries, black cherries. Really, really uh, Maybe even touch of pomegranate in there. Getting a little bit of spice, um, I'm assuming again a little bit of oak uh, usage here, uh, but kind of like a cinnamon, um, star anise quality. Uh, I'm getting some floral notes too, that was what I, um, kind of like a violet, um, yeah, uh, delicious, smells like very sweet ripe fruit. Yeah, I would say medium intensity on the palate. I think the nose is a bit more expressive than the palate. Um, um, so dry wine, um, um, medium plus acidity, like a red wine with good acidity. Again, uh, medium minus, medium alcohol. Again, like I'm gonna say 12 and a half again. Uh, about that, told in half. Uh, yeah, super integrated alcohol. Do not does not even phase me. This is like way in check. Um, good job in getting the fruit in there at the right time and, and making this wine. Um, body, yeah, medium, medium minus. It's it's on a, it's a lighter. Let's go medium. I think earlier vintages I've had have definitely been more on the medium minus side. Uh, again, this is a little fuller. Uh, 2015 in general was a bright sunny year, and, and I don't necessarily think of 2015 in Burgundy as a typical vintage. It's definitely a more extracted vintage. Um, but yeah, let's go medium body.
Yeah. Uh, getting a little bit more sour fruit on the palate. Uh, cranberry, uh, sour red cherry, um, uh, red cherries, pomegranate, uh, a little bit of strawberry. Um, I'm getting a kind of like a like a pie crust kind of doughy thing going on as well. Some spice, um, cinnamon. Uh, what was the other? Uh, getting something else. There's another. Still the florals. I'm getting the uh, the violets are coming through on the, especially on the finish. Um, a little like um, kind of like oolong tea, black tea um, on the finish. Not leathery, but like a, what am I thinking? So I'm getting, getting a touch of spice, but it's very, very subtle. Uh, yeah, I guess like a like a, a star anise kind of note, uh, but the, the, the herbal, the, 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 the kind of tea uh, of, of, and violets, that kind of oolong tea and violets. It's uh, it's it's quite interesting. And then uh, finishing with that like sour cherry, sour, uh, the kind of pomegranate cranberry. And I don't mean it's like a sour finish, but just that that kind of like lighter red fruit uh, with good acidity. Um, this finish is interesting. This is um, I'm still tasting this a little bit. I would say medium plus length finish. Um, it is again super balanced. Um, again, if you're looking for big extracted oaky wines, uh, higher alcohol, this is looking in the wrong place uh these guys are this is precision purity uh balance um these are what from what i've had of the few bottles i've had uh, uh, from them over the couple of vintages that i've been following them uh, they, they have it locked down i it's just a shame that they're they can't do this as a as a as a larger scale i mean they make such good wine um uh they are based in uh seven le bon um, and on the outskirts there of Southern the Bone, and they, um, I, I believe they have it set up in their in the basement um, of, of a house out there, and it's quite uh, quite small, and they do very minimal production. But if you can find them, seek them out, check them out on Wine Searcher. Uh, this is really good stuff. Uh, this wine, uh, the for the Bourgogne Rouge, I would have, I would rate it. I'm gonna go 90 points. I would say 80. I was gonna say 89. I think I gave those 2013 or 14 and 89. I'm gonna go 90 points on this. Uh, you can check out some of my previous reviews on Instagram uh, or Facebook or Twitter. They're kind of they're stored in there. Um, this is this is drinking well. Um, and I, I definitely think that um, I like the 2014 uh, uh, Bourgogne Blanc a little bit better than the 2015, just in terms of uh, stylistically. But I think that the 2015 um, uh, Bourgogne Rouge is is really nice. Um, and definitely check out their other bottlings. Uh, they are totally worth it. Um, even on the high end, they don't get too crazy expensive, but for, I mean, if you can find these on sale, but they're, they're roughly around $30 each. Again, check out Flatiron. They do a great job of bringing in great places and get on their mailing list because um, uh, they often have some good deals. Um, so it's, uh, it's definitely seek this out. Okay, uh, that's it for the show. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the bottom of the videos or find me over social media. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the links uh, that are going to pop up next to me at some point here. And uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped some of your thirst for knowledge. Cheers. Cheers.